Hello fellow birders, my name is Dennis Kania. Today we're going to be taking a closer look at separating Tennessee warbler from orange-crowned warbler in fall plumage. On the DuPage Birding Club Education Channel, we'll be discussing all things bird related. And as I mentioned, our topic today will be separating Tennessee and orange-crowned warbler in fall plumage, and I've also wanted to give some consideration to Nashville warbler. So here are all three species. You can see that they do have a very similar color scheme, and um, the bill shape is very much the same. So you can see that there can be a little bit of confusion depending on how well of a view you get of these individuals. So let's take a closer look. Here's a graph depicting the um, availability of all three of these species. You can see all three of them are migrants. We have uh, Tennessee, Orange Crown, and Nashville all coming through in the springtime. Uh, Orange Crown and Nashville probably preceding the uh, Tennessee warbler just by a little bit. In fact, this year, I did have Tennessees coming in quite late, and so I wasn't seeing them until the second half of May. In the fall, we see that the Tennessee warblers and Nashville warblers come in first and they're starting to show up in the latter part of August. And Orange Crown is more likely to be showing up uh, at the end, end of August into early September. And all three species should be around through October. And on very rare occasions, we'll get them a little later than that. Uh, much to our surprise, one December morning, uh, it was actually December 5th, I can recall quite clearly. This was many years ago, but um, we did find, uh, much to our surprise, a, uh, a Nashville warbler. So here's the warbler between Orange Crown and Tennessee. This is the much more likely warbler to see. And you can see that uh, it has a very plain facial pattern uh, with a few features, the uh, weak supercilium and a weak eye line. This is something that it shares with orange crowned warbler. Um, very uh, greenish olive on the back. And if you get individuals like this one, which is a first year female, you're going to see a lot of yellow on the underparts. And this is what's going to make for some confusion with the uh, orange crowned warbler. If you get an individual like this, it's more likely that we, we wouldn't have a tough time separating this out from orange crowned. So uh, the one thing that we'd want to take a close look at is the undertail coverts. And even on this very yellowish first year female, you can see that the undertail coverts are very white. And you can, ex you can see that they extend very far out on the tail. You can see this individual has white undertail coverts as well. Uh, another thing that I would like to point out is the primary projection, which is the distance from where the secondaries end. And you can see that the secondaries all kind of line up here. They're all the same length right where my cursor is. And then the last primary tip is all the way out here. So you can see that's a considerable length for primary projection. You can see that in this individual as well. You can see that the secondaries are all ending right here where my cursor is. And then the tip of the last primary is all the way out here. So that's considerable. So those two features actually make this bird look short tailed when comparing it to the orange crown. I also wanted to point out that when you get these birds in very, very fresh plumage, you can on occasion see some that will just give a hint of wing bars. So don't let that fool you. Um, those will actually disappear pretty quickly with feather wear, so you won't see them for very long. So here's our other species that we might have some confusion with, and you can see that that facial pattern is again very much the same. Uh, this bird maybe has slightly grayer tones to it, um, but then if you look at this one here, it is more olivey. So at any, at any rate, the, um, the facial pattern is similar. You do have somewhat of a supercilium here. There's a very, very weak hint of an eye line here. Uh, this individual as well, is barely, fairly weakly um, marked in the face. This one here is a little bit stronger looking, uh, but we don't have a good profile on that bird. So, Again, look at the undertail coverts. You can see that they're yellowish. You can see that here. You can kind of pick that out right here. You can see that the undertail coverts do not extend out onto the tail as far as what we were seeing on the Tennessee. And you can also see that the primary projection is much shorter. Again, here is a line formed by the all the secondaries ending, which are all the same length. And then the primaries extending out here and the tip is all the way out about here. That's a much shorter extension than what we just saw on that. Um, Tennessee warbler. 
So the shorter primary extension, the fact that the undertail coverts do not go out as far, make this bird look longer tailed. And that might actually be a clue for you if you see these birds darting around in the um, low growth of uh, white snake root and uh, golden rods in the, in the woodland floor. Um, they do both forage in that area and you might just get a quick glimpse and that might be enough to tell you at least to start thinking orange crown versus uh, Tennessee. So here's our third species that I wanted to throw in here. And again, the color scheme is very similar, but it does have a different facial pattern. And if you're going to get a good look at the bird, that should become very obvious to you. You'll see that complete eye ring. The problem is that maybe with poor lighting or a bad look, that eye ring is not quite so obvious. And so that's where we might have a little bit of confusion. But even if we do have that happen, um, we should be able to determine that this is not orange crown warbler. You can see that it does have yellow undertail coverts, and we did have yellowish undertail coverts on those orange crowns. But on Tennessee, or on Nashville rather, it, it tends to be a brighter yellow. And overall, we should see more yellow, again, if you get a good look. So just by the brightness of the undertail coverts, and hopefully you get to see that eye ring, um, we should be able to separate Nashville out from the other two species. So all three of these species do have an overall similar color scheme, uh, particularly when you're dealing with first year Tennessees uh, of females and uh, Nashville warblers as well. The so Tennessee and orange crown warblers do have a very similar facial pattern. Uh, check the undertail coverts for the color and then also look for that primary projection. And because of those two features, the primary projection and those undertail coverts extending out very far on Tennessees, um, it gets quite a different look as far as what the tail structure is like, looking very short-tailed on Tennessee and very long-tailed on orange crowns. The eye ring of the Nashville warbler should be easy to sep uh, easily used to separate them out from the other two species, but it's not always that obvious as I showed in that one example. So depending on poor lighting or your positioning, you may not get a very good look at that. So you need to study these birds carefully and need to give some consideration to Nashville, which in looking at the field guide, you might, you might gloss over that and not think that you need to be concerned with Nashville uh, as far as confusion with the other two species, but it can happen in the field. I've seen it happen. So do take a close look and remember that undertail coverts, although they are yellow, they should be a brighter yellow than anything you would see on an orange crowned warbler. So thanks for taking the time to view this video. Hopefully we have given you some bird food for thought, and I hope you'll join us again in the future as we discuss all things bird related.